What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to optimize the brand new season for Warzone Pacific Season 2 that released just yesterday. This video is going to lightly touch on optimizing Windows before we get into the actual game itself. So if you'd like to squeeze even more performance out of your computer, in the description down below you'll find links to Windows 10, 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. First of all, if you haven't already, make sure that your Windows and your graphics card drivers are up to date. Windows update is super self-explanatory, and of course driver updates can either be downloaded from the official websites, which you'll find linked down below, or of course using tools like NVIDIA GeForce Experience. Once you've updated Windows and your graphics drivers, let's hop straight into the Battle.net launcher to optimize that. What optimization can you do in the launcher you may be asking? Well, click the Blizzard button in the top left, then click Settings, and inside of here, on the App Settings page, look for On Game Launch and set it to Exit Battle.net completely. This way, it'll use less of your PC in the background. Why is that? Well, this is a Chrome window, or at least a browser window, that runs a couple of things in the background. Of course, being a browser window, much like Steam, Discord, and an actual browser is, it usually has hardware acceleration on by default. This does improve your experience in the browser, or a browser, but of course, when you're playing games, any program that takes away from your graphics card, especially in GPU limited games, will cause you to lose FPS. So besides closing other programs, it's a very good idea to go through each program on your computer and disable hardware acceleration so that it uses more of your CPU in the background, or none when it idles, compared to taking up GPU resources even at idle. So untick use browser hardware acceleration inside of Discord, Steam, etc. Do the same there so hardware acceleration is off entirely, leaving your graphics card completely for Warzone itself. When this is done, head across to the Game Settings tab, expand Call of Duty Warzone, and in here look for the additional command line arguments. Usually you'll enter hyphen D3D11 here, though in my previous video, quite a few people said that this was causing their game not to start up at all. Though those who were able to start up their game using DirectX 11 explicitly defined here, they were getting better FPS and better input latency. So you may want to add this right after following the optimization guide to see if you actually gain anything from it or not. If you put this in and your game doesn't start, simply come back here, remove it, and click done in the bottom right. For me, I'll be leaving this on however, then click done. Now back on the Warzone screen over here, simply click the settings wheel next to play and click show in Explorer. Open the Call of Duty Modern Warfare folder, and inside of here, we'll be scrolling down until we see the modernwarfare.exe that's taking up around 300 megs. Right-click this file, click Properties, and inside of here, on the Compatibility tab, make sure Disable Full Screen Optimizations is ticked, then click Change High DPI Settings, and tick this box at the bottom, select Application, and click OK, then Apply. For some people, you'll find that you get much better performance by clicking Run This Program as an Administrator, though do note that if you have this ticked, even though it does get priority over other programs on your computer for first dibs to your hardware, memory, etc. This will also stop hotkeys in OBS, Discord, and the rest working. You'll need to run those as admin as well for hotkeys to start working once again. That includes push to talk, etc. Then click OK, and at the very top of the folder browser, simply right click and click copy address as text. When you have this folder copied, hit start and type in GPU, then open graphics settings. Inside of this graphics settings window here, Windows 11 may look a little bit different, you'll have a hardware accelerated GPU scheduling option. Make sure that this is turned on and under graphics performance preference, select desktop app and then click browse. In this new window, click in any space at the top here and hit Control V, then Enter, to paste and navigate to the Modern Warfare install directory. Double click on modernwarfare.exe and it should be added to the list. If it's not already selected, expand it and click Options. Then choose High Performance and Save. This way, it'll make sure that it always launches on the best GPU available in your computer, which is especially important on notebooks and laptops. Then we'll click the Home button in the top left and head into the Gaming section. In the Xbox Game Bar tab, make sure that this is turned off unless you specifically use any of the features here. The Game Mode tab, Game Mode should be turned on, and the Captures tab sometimes has an option to turn it off. However, if you don't have a button here to turn off capturing, you'll need to open up the Xbox Game Bar if you have it installed, otherwise you can skip this step. So start, Xbox, and I'll open up the Xbox Game Bar. 
At the very top, I'll click the Settings button. Then I'll select Capturing. And inside of here, simply make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is turned off. Then click anywhere to close it. What exactly is it? Well, it's similar to NVIDIA Shadow Play. It records your screen all the time, allowing you to save the past few minutes or seconds. And of course, is an unnecessary feature in most cases if you don't actually use it. Now, if you're someone who uses NVIDIA DLSS, you may want to try and manually update DLSS. In the description down below, you'll find a download link. Simply head across there and where you see NVIDIA DLSS latest, click download here, choose a server, wait for it to download, then open it up. Now, of course, in most cases, updating this will help your performance if you use NVIDIA DLSS, though sometimes it may not. So we're not going to remove the original DLL from inside of here. We're instead just going to rename it as I have here already. So simply find nvngx underscore DLSS dot DLL and add to the name. So I'll say hyphen backup, for example, then drag the DLL that we just downloaded into the folder here and you've successfully updated NVIDIA DLSS. You can then close out of the zip and delete it if you wish. Of course, if you have any issues regarding DLSS, come back here and restore the DLL by deleting our new one and renaming our backup file back to the original. Now let's get to some advanced config. I'll navigate across to my Documents folder, then Call of Duty Modern Warfare and the Players folder. Inside of the Players folder, if you have an advanced options.ini file, open this up. Otherwise, click View at the very top, make sure File Name Extensions is ticked, right click anywhere, New, Text Document, and type in adv underscore options dot ini and remove the dot txt. If you see this pop up upon hitting enter, you've done it successfully, hit yes, and you've now created it. Open it up. If you manually created this, simply copy exactly what you see on screen. By default, the video memory scale over here is set to 0.8 or lower to use a lot less VRAM on your graphics card. If you have a mid to high tier graphics card, change it to 1.2 and save the file. Otherwise, you can drop this down to, say, 0.9 if you're experiencing crashes related to video memory. For me, I'll be leaving this at 1.2 happily on my NVIDIA 1080 Ti. Next up, Renderer Worker Count. This is a bit advanced. I'll hit Control Shift and Escape to open up the Windows Task Manager, and I'll head across to the Performance tab, CPU, and you should see how many cores your PC has in the top right or down here cores and logical processes. One we're going to be focusing on is the core count. If you're an AMD user, you should set the number here to roughly three quarters of your total cores. Because I have 12 cores in my computer, I'll be using eight here for Warzone. If you're using an Intel CPU, change this to half the number of cores you have. If you have eight cores, simply set this to four. However, if you have a very small number of cores in your PC, you can usually leave it at around 100% of the cores in your computer, giving it better performance. You don't want to limit this too much here. I wouldn't go below, say, maybe 6 or 8 here, unless, of course, you only have 4 in your computer, in which case, set it to 4. Then hit Save. If you do hit Save and you see a pop-up like this, simply make sure that you have the correct folder selected, Documents, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Players, and make sure that Save as Type has not got text document selected, rather all files star dot star. Then make sure it's still adv underscore options dot ini and click save, then yes. Now, of course, I've previously edited this file to make it read only. This is something you should do once you've successfully saved it. Right click the file, click properties, and inside of here, make sure that read only is ticked at the very bottom. This way, the game won't be able to change any settings that we've set here manually. So I'll untick this, apply, save my file, close it, and read only, apply, OK. Now the game's not able to change this file at all. Now before we actually get into the game itself, let's make sure our PC is nice and clean, there's nothing left over. Hit start and type in cleanup, we'll be opening disk cleanup as administrator. Simply select C drive, the one with windows on it, and click OK. Then wait for it to scan for leftover and temporary files on your computer. And when it's done, you'll see a list of temporary files on your computer. You can likely tick all of them. Something I would do is leave a recycle bin unticked if you'd like to manually go through that later. And thumbnails at the very bottom unticked as well if you work with a lot of images. Click OK, then delete files, and it'll start clearing up some leftover and temporary files on your computer. 
If you have the game on a different drive other than your C drive, then simply open it up as admin once again and rinse and repeat all of the same steps, this time selecting say D, E or whatever drive it is. Now, something about this tool is that it doesn't clean up all of the temporary files on your computer. There's still a couple that are left. Hold start and press R and inside of here, type percentage temp percentage, then hit enter. Inside of here, you'll see a ton of temporary files. App data, local, temp. Simply hit control A to select everything, then shift and delete to permanently delete these, then click yes. Now, when this runs through, depending on how many programs you have running on your computer, you'll receive a message about it not being able to delete files. In that case, just click skip. If you asked for admin permission, click the tick box and click continue, then yes if prompted for admin. Immediately, you can already tell there's a ton of leftover files on my PC, and this should at least give me some performance, especially if my drive is all the way full. There we go, a solid 10 gigabytes, 150,000 files. There's the error, so I'll click do this for all and then skip. And if you receive something about missing files, do it once again, select all and skip. When it's done, head back to this PC, double click on C drive, then head into Windows and scroll down to temp. Open up this file, control A, shift delete and enter. Once again, continue. And if you see any errors, do this for all and skip. There we go. We've now cleared our temporary folders on our computer, as well as a general disk cleanup. Awesome. Finally, before we actually launch up the game itself, it's a very good idea to minimize overlays and anything else that can hook into the game, FPS counters, etc., as they usually degrade performance somewhat, unless you absolutely need to use them, i.e. using only one screen, or you're busy benchmarking FPS differences between different settings. On top of that, it's a very good idea to open up the Windows Task Manager with Control, Shift and Escape. And inside of here, simply give the Processes tab a scroll, sorting by CPU, Memory and GPU in order to see what program is using what on your computer. Simply right click programs you don't want running and select End Task. At the very top, you'll also find a Startup tab. And inside of here, sorted by status, everything listed as enabled starts up with your computer. You can right click and disable them and they won't boot with your computer anymore. This way you won't need to manually close programs you don't actively use every hour of the day and instead you'll have to manually start them up instead of them opening with boot slowing down your computer all the time. If you're an advanced user you can head across to the surfaces tab at the very top, click open surfaces at the bottom and inside of here sort by startup type and everything listed as automatic is something that starts when your computer starts up. You can double click on anything here and change it from startup type automatic to simply manual. This way you or another program has to start up a service in order for it to run in the background and it won't take up resources on boot. Do note, don't select disabled, otherwise it may break certain functionality on your computer. If you'd like to get even more in depth, as in programs are still starting on your computer, even though you've checked both of these locations, it could be hidden away somewhere else. In the description down below, you'll also find a guide on optimizing your Windows startup completely. It's really an ultimate guide. Finally, with that out of the way, let's actually launch up the game itself. Let's go ahead and see what kind of FPS I'm getting before we actually jump into optimizing game settings. Of course, if you see shader optimization at the very top, wait for this to complete and then click on Call of Duty Warzone Pacific Season 2 on the main menu. To get a good representation of FPS, I've enabled an FPS counter and I'll head into the Caldera Clash. So landing over here, I'm sitting at a solid 50-ish FPS, which is a lot better than the last time I tested this game. Of course, there's a couple of different optimizations that have already been run in my game. This isn't a completely stock setup. Things are running pretty good on my PC as is that we can get a ton more FPS out of this game. So from a 55, 50 ish FPS average, low 50s, how exactly can we get this game to perform even better? Back on the main menu inside of Call of Duty Warzone Pacific Season 2, click the options button in the bottom left, then head across to the graphics tab at the very top. Starting from the very top, the display mode should be set to full screen for the best possible FPS. Though counterintuitively, on some GPUs, you'll get better performance on full screen boardless, and that's what I get on my particular computer. So I have that selected. The display adapter should be your best graphics card in your computer, connected to the screen that's listed right above it. If you're playing in full screen mode, you'll be able to set a refresh rate here. It should be as high as possible, that's a supported refresh rate on your monitor. The render resolution should always be set to 100%, anything below will be blurry and anything above will cost extra performance for not much gain. Dynamic resolution should be turned off to keep the game looking and running stably. Dynamic resolution should be turned off. 
Aspect ratio, leave it as automatic unless you absolutely need to set something manually yourself. Sync every frame, V-Sync should be turned off for better input latency unless you're specifically getting screen tearing as seen on the left hand side here when you're looking around. In that case, you'll need to enable it. The custom frame rate limit should be set to custom and expanding the advanced options here, the only thing you'll really want to play around with is gameplay custom frame rate limit. You can change this to be whatever you'd like and that'll be the upper limit of frames on your computer. You'll only really need to use this if you record using something like OBS Studio and you're dropping frames there. Drop this to just below the FPS that you're getting in game or a little bit lower and you should reserve some GPU for your OBS Studio and things alike to use. The rest of these options here are user preference all the way down to NVIDIA highlights. I personally don't use these, so keeping these disabled gives me better performance in game, at least slightly. On mid to high tier graphics cards, you shouldn't notice any difference having this enabled or disabled other than if you have a slow hard drive, for example. The NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency option should be set to enabled or enabled plus boost for better input latency in game. You have some more information on the right hand side here. Then click apply settings and at the very top, we'll be heading across to the quality tab. The top two options here, field of view and camera movement are completely user preference. Have these set to whatever you're comfortable with. You should consider your gameplay much more important than these two options up here. I have mine on the absolute widest. The details and texture section over here is where we can gain some extra FPS. Of course, as you know, drop everything beyond this point to the lower options in order to get better performance in game, better FPS and better input latency. However, of course, this guide isn't just going to tell you to lower absolutely everything here. I'll make sure to mention what is important and what isn't. Starting with streaming quality at the very top. If you have more than 4GB of VRAM, you should have this set to normal. Set it to low if you have a really low tier graphics card. Texture resolution depends on how much VRAM you have and shouldn't have too much of an impact on your game. It could have something to do with loading times, but this is something that I'd like to have turned up to at least a normal or high if I have tons of VRAM in my computer. If you have a graphics card with less VRAM, you'll of course need to drop this as this is one of the most effective ways of lowering VRAM usage in Call of Duty Warzone. Texture filtering anisotropic has no effect on FPS in game, though it does have quite a staggering difference in detail in game. Particle quality is of course something I'd usually have set to high as I don't like these blocky artifacts that you may see in this image here and of course will only result in periodic FPS drops whenever things are happening rather than permanent FPS drops. Bullet impact and sprays are user preference. I prefer to have these on, so they could result in more CPU usage. Tessellation shouldn't really matter, so you can leave this as all. Otherwise, you can set this to near or disabled if your PC gains anything from these. However, I really don't think you would. Dismemberment and gore effects are user preference and of course could result in a tiny bit of extra stability when you're actually in combat. I personally have these enabled. On-demand texture streaming should be set to high quality so that high quality textures are downloaded as you play the game. However, you can disable this to show only local textures, which could be rather blurry if they're on your computer. This of course depends on how much internet you're willing to spend while playing the game and it shouldn't have too much of an effect on performance. I leave this on high quantity and in the advanced section here, we can change how much it can actually download as well as clear the texture cache if you so wish. The button at the very bottom, I wouldn't recommend clicking as it takes a long time, but you may want to click this when you're done optimizing all of the other settings here, the restart shader installation step. Post-processing effects, lowering all of these here should give you not only better visibility while playing the game, but better FPS as well. Filmic strength and film grain especially. If you're someone who streams, you may want to set a tiny bit of film grain here in order to keep your video encoder working hard on your computer. That way you should be using a higher bitrate and things should look less blocky, especially in recordings and live streams. Otherwise, set both of these to zero. Anti-aliasing, I usually have set all the way off for the best performance, though of course if you absolutely hate jagged edges, you can turn it on for a slight blur effect. Depth of field, I usually turn off for better FPS and visibility. Same goes for world motion blur, you should absolutely have this off if you value seeing people while you're spinning around. Weapon motion blur is user preference, I like to have this disabled. Scrolling down, shadow and lighting, you'll also gain a couple of extra FPS here. Lowering the shadow map resolution results in minimal change in game as you can see here, though it does have quite a big effect on VRAM as you can see at the very bottom. 
cache spot shadows should be enabled, but of course will cause the game to use additional RAM. Cache sun shadows is exactly the same. If you have lots of RAM in your computer available while you're playing the game, say a couple of extra gigs, while you're actually running around the game world, you can enable these for a bit of extra performance. Particle lighting is user preference and of course causes FPS drops in particular situations. You can usually lower this without too much effect. DirectX ray tracing should absolutely be turned off. Ambient occlusion at the very bottom has almost no effect on visual or FPS impact, but of course, as you can see here, ambient occlusion will show visual noise if the anti-aliasing option is not set to SMAA T2X or Filmic SMAA. So you should have this off if you have anti-aliasing up here turned off. Finally, screen space reflections. You can usually leave these on normal. This is a technology that's absolutely ancient, doesn't have anything to do with RCX, and has got really good at where we are currently. You can lower this if you'd prefer reflections in game to be more blurry, or of course save a tiny bit of performance here. So I'll leave this on low. With our settings optimized here, I'll simply apply, and if you need to restart your game, you'll see a prompt here. Everything else is completely user preference. The only thing I would change is on the keyboard and mouse tab, mouse, I'd make sure that mouse acceleration and filtering at the very bottom are set to zero. Same goes for mouse smoothing, make sure this is disabled. The audio tab is user preference, but from here you'll have a ton of different options. Usually you'll want to select something like studio reference or a really neutral sound profile, but if you set this to say midnight mode, gunshots, explosions, and things like that will be around about the same volume as nearby footsteps. It may be better to listen through this if you'd like to hear people running around, for example. You can, however, expand it by clicking it to see exactly what it does. And of course, there's a play audio test button at the very bottom. Other than that, everything else is user preference. So once again, you should be getting much better FPS now. I'll quickly search for another game to get our after optimization FPS, but of course, you may see even more than this as I've already done the Windows optimization and multiple other things before actually starting up the game here for the first benchmark. Once again, if you'd like to get even more out of your computer, check the description down below for not only Windows 10, 11, NVIDIA optimization guides, and of course, a ultimate startup guide in order to get the absolute most out of your computer. I'm not expecting too much as I did already have pretty good settings before actually optimizing. If you haven't had things optimized yourself, you should see a massive improvement. So there we go, dropping into the world. As you can see, I'm already averaging 72 FPS. That's a 20 FPS improvement for roughly, I don't know, maybe 40-ish percent. Yep, 60, 70. Awesome. So we're at the really low 70, high 60s compared to the low 50s and pretty bad stability in general. So anyways, that's really abandoned for this video. Once again, check the description down below. Thank you all for watching. My name is Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.